Okay, good morning again, everyone. So my name again, I'll reintroduce myself as Dr. Victor Job, and my present talk, I'll uh, just um, put on the animation, sorry about that. Right, slide through. So my talk is entitled, Combined Effects of Inclined Magnetic Field and Navier Slip on Pre-Convective and Radiative Flow of CNT water nanofluids, a Lee group analysis. So this particular study is closely related to the improvement of the thermal conductivity of heat transfer fluids. And this is important in a variety of applications, such as in the design of electronic hardware, heat transfer systems in the transportation industry, and in particular, heating, ventilation, air conditioning and refrigeration systems. The enhancement of thermal conductivity in these systems may be achieved by creating suspensions of nanoparticles in commonly used heat transfer fluids, and this suspension is referred to as a nanofluid. In particular, we are looking at a type of nanoparticle called the carbon nanotube, and this um, is divided into three categories. SWCNTs, which are single-walled carbon nanotubes, double-walled carbon nanotubes, DWCNTs, and multi-walled carbon nanotubes, MWCNTs. And a very interesting thing about carbon nanotubes is that their thermal and physical properties are strongly dependent upon their chemical configuration. And in fact, they can behave either like a metal or like a semiconductor according to their particular chemical structure or arrangement. Now, there have been many studies conducted thus far on convective nanofluid flows along a stretching surface. And this is important in understanding various industrialized processes, such as the extrusion of polymer sheet material and the drawing of plastic films. Also, the study of thermal radiation is important in situations where there are significant variations in fluid temperature. And this is applicable to the design of heat transfer systems, particularly under high temperatures. However, there have been no existing studies so far on the combined effects of thermal radiation and boundary slip on the surface of a stretching sheet related to the flow of nanofluids that have suspended carbon nanotubes. Therefore, the objective for this present talk is to examine the influence of nanoparticle concentration and radiation parameter on flow velocity, temperature, skin friction on the surface of a stretching sheet, and heat transfer rates on this surface in the case of SWCNT and MWCNT water nanofluids under the influence of an inclined magnetic field. So here we have the description of the problem and mathematical model. So in this description, we have a vertical stretching sheet that is in line here with the x-axis, and this is stretching linearly in the positive x-direction. This stretching sheet is also considered to be permeable and has permeation velocity Vw in the y-direction. And there is also the presence of an inclined magnetic field, which is inclined at an angle to the y-axis, and the magnetic flux density of this magnetic field is B0. The velocity components of the fluid near the stretching sheet, or the nanofluid near the stretching sheet, in the x and y directions are denoted by U and V, respectively. We assume in this problem that the nanofluid flow is incompressible and laminar. The Reynolds number is sufficiently large so that boundary layer flow is assumed near the stretching sheet. In order to describe radiative heat flux within the fluid, the Rosland approximation is used here, and the Bosinesque approximation is used in order to describe the effects of free convection within the nanofluid. So according to these assumptions, we have the following governing equations shown here the continuity equation for conservation of mass within the nanofluid, the boundary layer equation, which is derived um, from the Navier-Stokes equation for large Reynolds number, the energy equation describing the temperature within the fluid, and we have associated boundary conditions describing slip flow at the surface of the stretching sheet, permeation velocity through the stretching sheet, that's Vw, constant wall temperature, Tw, 
on the stretching sheet, as well as far field conditions of stagnation or zero velocity, as well as the temperature approaching some ambient temperature T infinity. Now, in order to analyze and obtain a solution to this problem, we define some non-dimensional variables along with a stream function psi, which is defined in terms of the velocity components U and V. And based on the nature of the particular governing equations we have for this problem, we were able to identify a scaling Lie group of transformations, which we call gamma, defined in terms of the transformations in terms of the spatial variables, the stream function psi, and the temperature T. And from or assuming group invariance under the scaling Lie group gamma of transformations, we were, up, uh, we were able to obtain uh, some similarity variables or similarity transformations for this problem, which allowed us to convert our differential equations and boundary conditions into a system of ordinary differential equations. And this nonlinear system is converted into a system of first order differential equations for its solution. And then we solved it numerically using the shooting method with the fourth order runge kutta technique. So now we come to the results obtained in this study. So first we have a velocity plot for different values of the concentration of nanoparticles. And what we observed here is an increase in the flow velocity when the concentration of nanoparticles is increased. And this is primarily due to an increase in the viscosity of the nanofluids, as well as a corresponding reduction in the slip near the stretching surface of the uh, stretching sheet. We also observe that the medium mole carbon nanotube based nanofluid has a higher flow velocity than the SWCNT based nanofluid. And this is as a result of the fact that MWCNT um, nanoparticles have a higher, have a lower electrical conductivity than the SWCNT nanoparticles. We also observe in the temperature profiles here that the temperature increased as the concentration of each of the nanoparticles is increased. And we also notice here that the MWCNT nanoparticles has actually here now a lower temperature than the SWCNT nanoparticles. And this is due to a lower thermal conductivity of the corresponding nanofluid as compared to the SWCNT based nanofluid. So we also see here a plot of the surface skin friction on the surface of the stretching sheet versus the volume fraction of nanoparticles, as well as the angle of inclination of the magnetic field. And what we observe here is that as the inclination angle of the magnetic field is increased, there is an increase in the friction on the surface of the stretching sheet. We also notice that as the concentration of each of the nanoparticles is increased, there is a reduction in the friction on the stretching surface. And finally, we have a figure depicting the heat transfer rate for different values of the concentration of nanoparticles and the thermal radiation parameter, R. And we see that as both of these parameters, or as each of these parameters, the concentration of nanoparticles, as well as the thermal radiation um, parameter increases, there is a reduction in the heat transfer rate near the surface of the stretching sheet. And this is primarily due to the corresponding increase in temperature within, on, within the nanofluid near to the stretching sheet. So in conclusion, the flow velocity was found to be higher in the case of the MWCNT based nanofluid as compared to the SWCNT based nanofluid. The velocity and temperature of each of these nanofluids were found to increase with an increased nanoparticle concentration. The skin friction increases when the angle of inclination of the magnetic field as well as, well, uh, increases and decreases when we increase the concentration of nanoparticles. And finally, the rate of heat transfer near the stretching sheet may be reduced if we were to increase the radiation parameter R and increase the concentration of nanoparticles, whether it be SWCNT or MWCNT nanoparticles. 
So these are the references or some of the references used in preparation of this talk and also the research work that we have done. And we have come to the end of this talk. I thank you for listening. Feel free to ask any questions that you may have at this time. Thank you so much, Dr. Joe. Um, the floor is open for questions. Right. From the equation shown, it was difficult to tell if the fluid was considered homogeneous. Um, so, did you consider the fluid as a homogeneous fluid? Um, yes, it was considered as a, as a um, we can say, a homogeneous suspension with uniform nanoparticle concentration in each case or for each type of nanoparticle use. Okay, great. Um, but can there be inhomogeneous clusters of the nanoparticle? Um, well, I wouldn't necessarily say cluster. Um, according to um, certain, let's say, physical phenomena that phenomena that may um, appear, especially with respect to the differences in temperature, there may be a non-uniformity in the concentration of nanoparticles, spatially. Um, there may be clusters forming if the concentration of nanoparticles was um, very high. So if you have a concentrated mixture, um, then that would be the case. However, in this study, we considered that the concentration of nanoparticles was sufficiently dilute that there wouldn't be any agglomeration of nanoparticles within the okay. Okay. clustering. So the 50% so the reason why your phi didn't go above 0.5? Yes, we didn't want it too concentrated. Okay. Are there any other sources of energy losses? Um, well, other than um, what Shepherd. we considered in this study, no. Um, there are other possible sources, depending on the, um, the nature of the problem or the assumptions that may have been made. But in this particular problem, no, we didn't consider that. All right. Um, so um, another participant wants to know what was the contributing factor in investigating carbon nanotubes in particular, as opposed to, say, Graphene and um, particles. Well, graphene in itself may not be considered a nanoparticle. Um, in particular, we considered carbon nanotubes in order to ensure stability of the suspension. That was that would be um, considered in this study. If we had used um, graphene, we didn't. We, it may or may not have been of the nanoparticle scale. So we may not be sure if the suspension that would be formed would actually be a stable suspension. Okay, and then um, once again, the issue of turbulence, how would that, could that increase your thermal efficiency or um, what would you need to do in order to be able to study that using the methodology that you've done? So, um, well, um, there would need to be small, mo some significant modifications in the methodology that was used. Um, the governing equations for that particular problem or the way in which we treat it would require a different set of assumptions, which of course would uh, result in a completely different mathematical model. Now, right. studies on, on turbulent flows would have um, um, shown that there was a higher or would have shown a higher um, heat transfer um, or higher heat transfer being achieved. Um, however, physically, um, there would be the concern that in turbulent flows, um, there may be precipitation of nanoparticles in that case. So stability concerns might be there in okay. that situation. Very interesting. Okay, thank you. Much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Joe.